Go lift something heavy, then do it again and again and again. Feel your muscles getting hotter? That is literally the feeling of your muscles trying to produce as much energy as fast as possible to maintain homeostasis and allow you to do another repetition. The energy required in a muscle cell is needed for a very simple reason. Energy changes the shape of proteins in the muscle that reach out and grab onto other proteins. As they retract, the muscle shrinks, allowing you to pick up very heavy objects. While the physical movement of your muscle cell is an action that obviously requires energy because work is being done, other reasons a cell needs energy are less obvious. Cells need energy to build, degrade, store, and release a wide variety of substances. Yet, cells manipulate energy in a manner that is consistent with the laws of thermodynamics. Energy that travels all the way from the sun into the molecules that cells use. You should definitely understand how this works because it will certainly be referenced on the AP test. So, follow along with us as we cover all the basics of cellular energy. This video covers section 3.4 of the AP Biology curriculum. We'll start by looking at an overview of cellular energy, before we look at how biology complies with the laws of thermodynamics. After the first quiz, we'll see some of the tricks cells use to control and metabolize energy. Finally, we'll see some examples of the system cells use to maintain energy flow no matter what. If you only need to review one of these sections, feel free to fast forward to the times outlined here. Otherwise, let's get started. The large majority of energy that flows through the Earth started out as energy bound to photons originating from the sun. As these photons pass through the chloroplasts of plants, they are stripped of their energy and it is transferred through an electron transport chain and into the bonds of ATP via ATP synthase. This ATP was then used to produce glucose via the Calvin cycle. This complex flow of energy is the process of photosynthesis, which will be covered in more detail in section 3.5. The molecules of glucose will go on to power almost every other reaction in nature. The process of cellular respiration, discussed further in section 3.6, starts with the breakdown of glucose via glycolysis. The products of glycolysis then enter the mitochondria, where the electron carrier molecules are loaded with electrons via the citric acid cycle. These electron carriers then dump their electrons into another electron tra transport chain, which powers another ATP synthase enzyme. This enzyme produces ATP that is distributed throughout the cell. This is the convoluted process of cellular respiration. The ATP molecules created by cellular respiration are utilized by a wide variety of cellular processes. They are used in primary active transport in order to concentrate molecules into various compartments and create ion gradients. These ATP molecules also power the synthesis of macromolecules, cell signaling, and various cell movements. There are literally thousands of processes powered by the combination of photosynthesis and cellular respiration in plants, animals, and fungi. But if you were paying close attention, you're probably wondering why plants need cellular respiration at all. In other words, why do plants even need cellular respiration if photosynthesis is already creating ATP? The answer is simple. You can only store so many ATP molecules within the cell before it can no longer be manufactured. The enzymes that create ATP can also complete the reverse reaction, meaning that high concentrations of ATP make it more likely that ATP will convert it back into ADP. Furthermore, cells need energy constantly, even in the dark. Without a storage molecule like glucose, plant cells would quickly run out of energy after the sun went down. Lucky for us, plants make plenty of glucose and store energy in other ways that power the entire food chain. Think about this. Plants not only support entire ecosystems, but they produce the very oxygen molecules that we breathe. As humans have expanded across the globe, we are constantly clearing rainforests and natural ecosystems to build artificial living spaces with little to no plant life. As we continue our journey into the theory of cellular energy, think about how a sustainability engineer might tackle the problem of human expansion without disrupting the flow of energy 
and oxygen on this planet. Though AP biology does not focus on the physics or specific chemistry of life on Earth, there are a few concepts related to these topics that you will be tested on. For instance, if you know the laws of thermodynamics, it may seem like living organisms are disobeying these laws. But these wouldn't be very good laws if all of biology disobeyed them. Consider the first law of thermodynamics. It states that an isolated system has a finite amount of energy that cannot be created or destroyed, only converted into different forms. It may seem that a biological organism is breaking this law as it continuously grows, incorporates energy into the bonds of newly synthesized molecules, and reproduces. While it is true that organisms constantly acquire energy and store that energy in new molecules, it is not true that an organism represents an isolated system. In fact, organisms are connected to the energy of the entire universe. The energy within the universe is constantly combining and dissociating into different forms, though none of it is lost. Now, consider the second law of thermodynamics. This law states that systems move from more ordered to less ordered, leading to a maximum amount of entropy. Entropy is a measure of chaos, or a lack of order, within a system. Since organisms are constantly taking small molecules and combining them into large molecules, organisms are technically decreasing the entropy in their immediate environment. But that is part of the reason why organisms need a constant flow of energy from the sun. Organisms are constantly battling the breakdown of large molecules into small molecules and are trying to become as ordered as possible. The energy flows from the sun through the processes of photosynthesis and respiration and back into the universe as it powers processes and is lost as heat. Without this constant input of energy, life on Earth would quickly return to entropy and die off. Now that we have covered the basics of energy flow and have seen how the laws of thermodynamics apply to biology, let's see if you can answer some AP style questions. Pause the video now and take this short quiz. You can find answers to these questions through the quick test prep link in this video's description. With the laws of thermodynamics against them, cells have a few tricks up their sleeves to continuously amass more energy, create ordered systems, grow, and reproduce. First off, one of the most important tools for creating timely, ordered reactions is the use of enzymes. Cells use enzymes to carry out thousands of reactions at different times in different parts of their cells. The catabolism has hundreds of different enzymes for working to break down molecules, while the anabolism has an entirely different set, though there is some overlap. Furthermore, enzymes required for similar processes are often located very close to each other physically, and they are able to quickly access the products from a previous enzyme. This keeps processes very ordered, ensuring that cells end up with the right product at the end of a complex process that can include dozens of individual enzymes. Enzymes are also important because they lower the amount of activation energy that a particular reaction needs to get started, but they don't affect the energy released or absorbed by individual reactions. Another trick cells use is coupling exothermic reactions with endothermic reactions in order to utilize the energy released by the first to power the latter. So, by ordering enzymes in specific reactions, cells can be as efficient as possible as they battle the laws of thermodynamics. If you're feeling a bit lost and low on energy, don't worry. Take a quick break to refresh. When we come back, we'll look at some solid examples that can help you get a better grasp on all of this energy theory. To better understand how cells maintain order and energy flow, let's go back to the first example we used to start this video, muscle cells. Every time you flex your muscle, bands of proteins in each muscle fiber shorten, causing entire muscles to shorten. In order to do this, the protein strands require ATP energy in order to move. An ATP molecule binds to the protein myosin, which catalyzes the release of energy as ATP is converted to ADP. The energy causes the myosin head to lurch forward. 
The myosin head attaches to a thin actin filament, and as the myotin protein returns to its normal position, it completes a power stroke. This pulls the strands of actin and myosin together, shortening the muscle cell. This process continues as long as you continue to flex your muscle, which clearly uses large amounts of ATP. Though your cells store a small amount of ATP, any prolonged flexing means your muscles will quickly run out of energy. So, the mitochondria in cells are quickly working to replace the ATP that was used up. Using a highly ordered series of enzymes, the Krebs cycle is quickly pumping out electron carriers and small amounts of ATP. The electron qu carriers quickly make their way to the inner mitochondrial membrane and the electron transport chain where they use the energy that they are carrying to create a hydrogen ion gradient. This gradient powers ATP synthase, which catalyzes the formation of ATP molecules that can be distributed back to the cell. Essentially, this highly ordered process is collecting energy from many exothermic reactions to create ATP, a highly endothermic process. While this system is enormously complex, there is one fatal flaw that can shut down the whole thing a lack of oxygen. Oxygen is the final electron acceptor for the electron transport chain. Without oxygen, the whole conveyor belt of reaction stops, beginning with the electron transport chain and working its way back to the many reactions of the Krebs cycle. Luckily, cells have a backup generator. When there is no oxygen, cells revert to a completely different set of enzymes to complete the separate process of lactic acid fermentation from remaining glucose molecules. This process produces much less ATP, but it allows the cell to maintain order and continue functioning until the body can supply more oxygen. Phew, that was a lot, but hopefully it shows how energy flows within a typical cell and how cells combat the laws of thermodynamics by maintaining a highly ordered system of enzymes that couple energy releasing reactions to reactions that need energy input. Don't worry about the details or specifics, we will cover those in later sections of the AP Biology curriculum. Now that we've covered exactly how organisms stay ordered and continue the flow of energy, let's see if you can utilize that knowledge. Pause the video now and take this second quiz. You can find answers to the quick test prep link below the video, as well as links to all of our other AP Biology resources that can help you better understand the material. Thanks for watching. Please like this video if you found it helpful and informative. Feel free to leave us any comments or questions you still have about the basics of cellular energetics. Be sure to subscribe to the Biology Dictionary YouTube channel for all of our AP Biology videos and resources. Good luck!